Hey, good morning everybody. Morgan SLV here. Uh, it's uh, Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2010. Uh, trying to get my camera set up here for you guys. Yeah, I'm still up in Tahoe. Put my sunglasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, still enjoying the weekend up here. You know, all the hot rods and whatnot. I'm a hot rod freak, speed freak, so to speak. Um, I just wanted to go over uh, just a quick, just a quick, uh, John. I'm a, I'm in USA today again today. I'm not really. I don't have my lop, laptop with me or anything. Uh, silver's at about 1840. Gold's about 1192. Uh, as of the close last night. So, one of the videos that I went over is the one of the things that I discussed was, you know, think about when the last time. Or if you look, if you look at the last few years, think about how many how many quarters we did not have some type of government stimulus, right? Well, Uncle Sam is at it to add it again. Let me read you a little something. Uncle Sam wants you to buy electric cars. Um, growing raft of growing raft of deduction credits results in absurdly uh, absur absurdly. Excuse me. Absurdly complex code. Ladies, that later this year the two big automakers will introduce radically new cars: the Nissan Leaf, an all-electric car with a range of about 100 miles, uh, will debut at about 32,780. The Chevy Volt, it's a plug-in electric hybrid with a backup motor, gives it a slightly larger uh, driving range at 41,000. Cheap they are not. But don't worry, the federal government has decided to pitch in with a tax credit of $7,500. So in other words, that's not a free market, is it? If you are um, bending the uh, taxpayer's ear in any one direction, that is not a free market. You're pulling sales forward that would not normally be made, number one. Number two, you're, you're bending, you're, you're skewing the market because you're, you're putting in dollars that shouldn't go there, right? The market, the free market, let me, let me, let me uh, put it another way. If there was no tax credit for either of those vehicles, I believe they'd be cheaper, right? Just like college would be cheaper if the government did not 100% um, back all the all the loans for the major colleges, right? The prices would have to go down. Simple, simple economics. Um, the intentions are good. They need to jump start an already an alternative energy industry. Um, the real cost. Is fairly low. Um, but put the subsidy in another context, and the appeal and the, and the appeal plummets. It's just the, the latest addition in a long, long list of industry-specific tax breaks designed to encourage certain types of consumer behavior. What does that mean, consumer behavior? That means they're skewing the market, correct? It means you wouldn't normally go out and buy a freaking fifty, forty-five thousand dollar electric vehicle unless Uncle Sam was giving you money. That's what that means. They cost the Treasury a staggering one trillion dollars a year. Much of it for dubious ends. Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam wants you to buy. A plug-in car just like he wanted you to buy cars that run on ethanol last year he wanted you to buy just about any car as long as you traded in your gas guzzling clunker he's very keen on having you go into go into a lot of debt to buy a house he also wants you to choose an, an, an expensive health insurance plan that covers everything so my whole my whole uh, understanding of this is that they're just skewing the market left and right. You had unnecessarily low interest rates for a, for an extended period of time, which caused what the housing bubble. Now they're uh, you know they're pitching in seven thousand five hundred free to buy this this electric car that only goes a hundred miles. I wouldn't even got to I wouldn't even I think I would have barely made it to Tahoe and then had to look for a place to plug the damn thing in this weekend. Okay. Uh, I drove up my son's 1960 C10 pickup. Love it. 
old hot rod. So, bottom line is this: uh, the government is just at it again. They're throwing, you know, good money after bad. If you can even think of it like that, if you even think of currencies like that, I don't. I, I think it's bad money after bad money. But all I'm saying is. It can't continue the way it's going. I think we all agree on that. What is the outcome gonna be? I don't know. What I tell people when I warn them about what's coming is I say, look, the other shoe hasn't dropped yet. The bad stuff hasn't happened yet. A lot of what I'm telling you, a lot of what I'm telling you, some form of it is going to happen. So it is up to you. Get your precious metals investments in order. Figure out what your plan is. You all know my game plan. As soon as, as, soon as I feel like I'm, uh, I'm at a very uh, good profit range for my precious metals, and I can locate the 10 or 15 homes, or or possibly a small, maybe a couple of fourplexes. I'm going to jump off and uh, ride the roller coaster. So, you know, that's my plan. I don't know what your plan is. I know your plan should include this studying, right? I'm the guy that he keeps pestering about studying. Uh, pay attention to Silver Futurist. He is a great guy, Robert Kiyosaki, Mike Maloney. Just stay, uh, just stay in tune with it. Every other day would work, right? Uh, I would suggest going out and getting you some silver right away. Morgan SLV out.